do we balance exploring new places without neglecting some sort of budget? To be fair, I think there's a lot of talk and probably best practices around budgets. Sure. And you and I do a lot of mental math, I think, in terms of the way we live. We don't operate by a strict budget. We True. have kind of approximate ballparks around what different categories should look like with our spending. Yes. Um, but we also, I will say, at least personally, although I think you share the same philosophy, we, we moved from in our 20s not having enough money to do pretty much anything to more of a rather than what can I afford mindset. I think we both have the mindset of more money can always be made. So we really start with what we want and our values and what is important to us and then find a way to make those things happen. True. And we also, I think, have pretty common interests as a family on what we want to do. And a lot of time that's in involving being outdoors and doing outdoor activities and not necessarily spending money at events like uh, concerts or movies. Or shopping. I mean, shopping, we don't really do any of those things. Local attractions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really catered more on spending time outdoors, mm -hmm. uh, especially national and state parks and visiting monuments and uh, things that get us moving and, and keep us outdoors. We have a national park pass. I forget how much it costs. What is it like? A, is that 150 okay. bucks? Yeah, maybe? 140. Yeah, something like that. There. It's pretty. If you're traveling or if you're planning if you're going on to like visiting, two or three or even one for two or three days, I think it's it ends totally up worth it. paying for itself. Yeah, we, we've already visited just in the last four months. We have visited. Oh. Five, six, seven, seven yeah. national I'd parks. Have to count. Uh, so it's more than paid for itself. Yeah. The whole family to to get into the park whenever we want and explore and go hike. We're really good, or Lauren's really good at packing a lunch on these days, so that we're not um, eating meals out as well. And snacks and just yeah. all the things. And actually, food is probably maybe one of our biggest expenses outside of like activities. I guess like. Uh, on I think we days. spend way more on food than on activities. Definitely. To us, for a family food of five, is absolutely. an activity, I yeah. would say. Yeah. But for us, going out to eat is also like a treat. It's not something yeah. we do daily. Regularly. No. We're pretty good at, Lauren's good at ordering groceries every week. We use Walmart, she orders it online, and then she goes and picks it up. So we keep our fridge and our pantry full. And then we've got, everyone always asks about the kitchen, like how we do food. We've got an oven, we've got a stove, we've got a microwave. We've got a full fledged kitchen. A George Foreman. Yeah. yeah. We make a lot, we make a of, lot of our food. meals that we eat and that saves money. I think what you're getting at, which is so true, and I think this may be true of anybody, I think we're just maybe really conscientious about it, is that our finances and the money that we spend are like in complete alignment with our values. And like to us, we do like food. So the money we spend on food, you know, we do buy, yes, we go to Walmart a lot, but we also buy organic. So we don't, but we also don't buy name brands. So it's like, you know, there's always these little things, but they're in alignment with what's important to us. And, um, you know, we, to us going out to a restaurant, yes, it's a treat, but it's also family time. And so that is an experience that's in alignment with our values. I think we're really lucky that a lot of our natural hobbies and activities are not yeah, very expensive. Yeah. You know, you can go hike a mountain yeah. for free in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, and so that part is really cool. But what I do want to be really honest about is we just had, I would say like our most expensive month in terms of activities October. kind of all hit at once. Yeah. In October. And that also coincided with being in California, which in general, gas was more expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah. Food was Everything. more expensive. Everything we yeah. did yeah. seemed to cost a lot of money, although Vegas was really expensive too, but yeah. we were only there a couple days and that felt a little more circumstantial. But while we were in California, we surprised the kids one morning and went to Disneyland. And that was not cheap. I mean, I think it was a thousand dollars just for the entrance for everybody and to be able to do all of that. And then we're buying food on top of it again. You know, we ate breakfast before we went into the park. We, I went and bought some bars and make sure we had snacks. You can ask for waters for free in Disneyland. So there were all these little things that we did, but to us, 
before we decided to go, we asked all our kids to pick a couple things they wanted to do. And one of them said Disney. So for us, that was like a commitment to an experience. Um, and then well, like it's I, something they can't do, we won't and can't do it right. every single state. Even right. And we probably won't go Florida again, activity. even when we go to Florida, like we've been, yeah. maybe we will, maybe we won't. We've got a long time to decide. Um, maybe we do Universal Studios or something else that again, it will be a major expense. But again, like he said, it's not something that we're doing day to day. I also took the younger two kids um, to San Diego Zoo Safari Park. I had never been. I really wanted to go. I lived in San Diego for four years. I've heard amazing things about it. Um, the time we were there, there just really wasn't a great day for everybody to go. So I took the little two as kind of our homeschooling field trip and I timed it with going in October when kids go for free. So I was, even though the, the entrance price is pretty expensive compared to other zoos, um, you know, I felt like I was doing my due diligence around it and making sure that the experience could happen. So I feel like we're always kind of weighing the pros and cons and really coming back to aligning it with what we want. And then we have another video coming up about how we fund our travels and make money on the road because there's a lot of people that they sell their house and or maybe they're still working full time for a company. Um, we're a little bit different in that we've both learned how to be self-employed and make our own money. And I'm not lying to you when I say that I was like, I felt a personal responsibility of like, I'm the one who wants to go create all of these memories for our family and have these experiences. So it, it lit a fire in my tush to be like, all right, I'm the one paying off the visa bill at the end of this month. I want to make sure that my business is in a place where I can do that, not feel guilty about it, not feel regretful about it and not be accumulating debt because we, we live primarily debt free, definitely credit card debt free. Um, so that's kind of how I approach that balance. Yeah. And even though California was expensive and there were those major things that we went and did like this in the zoo, other days we're going walking to the beach for free, right? We're hanging out oh, at yeah. the beach, we're bringing snacks wherever we go. Uh, so we did a lot of things and going down to the park that was close to the RV mm -hmm. park as well. So I think just in general, we're looking to do activities outdoors that actually don't cost us money, but still get us involved with something local. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that down the road, there are gonna be things like Disneyland that come from, okay, we're gonna have to make this happen it's a one-time thing but it's totally going to be worth it because we're all going to have great memories for it so it is a balance um, but we tend not to talk spend too much time dwelling on like well how do we get through this and do that because no one's trying to do something that's not in line with what the family wants i mean granted the kids would absolutely if they had the choice say we're going to disneyland every single day and then we're going to go to the zoo every single day but even them, I think they want to do. I don't know. I think they parking. they like free stuff. Yeah, they love yeah. going to the beach. There were times right before we left California. In fact, I was like, I need one more beach sunset. Like I'm go. This is my soul needs to watch the sun descend into the Pacific Ocean. I have to, we're leaving. I don't know when we're gonna be back again. And the kids were like, we don't wanna go to the beach again. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, Who doesn't wanna go to the beach again? So um, I agree. I think we do a good job of exploring new places and it doesn't, a lot of the activities you do doesn't have to cost a lot of money and you can find ways to afford to do the things that you do wanna do. Yeah, and I'll close by saying this from my perspective, like, we don't have to do everything. Like the goal isn't to go to a place and do every single thing that that place has available or to offer. <laughs> I think I struggle with this more than you, but I do think I've gotten better. Do you, you think I've gotten better? You have gotten better, but I, I try to remind myself, hey, yeah. we can come back. If it's something that we really feel like we're missing out or wanna do, put it on the list of places that we could return to. But then also remember, like look forward to what you have in front of you. We have another mm -hmm. new place to go explore. Mm -hmm. So prioritize what you want to do, what you can afford to do, and just don't get caught up in trying to do everything. Mm -hmm. I think some of our best days at the RV, are, when we haven't done anything, are days where we're just outside the RV and, and our outdoor space. We've got an outdoor mat and chairs and the kids have toys and a picnic bench. And we're literally just enjoying our new quote unquote home mm -hmm. and not worrying about utility bills. Doing something. The yard and having uh, after school activities mm -hmm. and things to go to. We're it's just, the slowness. We're genuinely relaxed. The kids have their favorite toys. They're not yearning for anything to mm -hmm. do anything. And Lauren and I are not stressed out about 
you know, I guess what I would just call home related mm -hmm. stresses. So mm -hmm. it's really just relaxing to be at the RV, even at the RV park, relaxing and, and unwinding. Mm -hmm. I think it was just last night that I was like, I'm so glad to just be here and do yeah. nothing because we had just done all of this stuff in California, yeah. been in Vegas for a few days with my family. And then we immediately got here and turned around to go see your sister, which was awesome, but it had been such a long day. And my just body and mind were like, oh my gosh, I wanna do nothing. And we stayed in last night yeah. and did nothing. Yeah. And I think, you know, the reminder is if you're going full time or for an extended period of time, like it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. And so we're not constantly exploring. I do have this urge of, not wanting to miss things that I think are important to me, but I do think we do a great job of balancing it with like, you're just gonna get exhausted and you're in, oh man, knock on wood. I haven't said this out loud. Should I say it out loud? Or is well, that gonna I be the kiss of death? Say. I have no idea. Oh, now I'm nervous. <laughs> well, I hope this isn't the kiss of death. Knock on, your car's like plastic. Drum roll. The, I was just gonna say, we've been gone for almost five months and no one has gotten sick. Yeah. Like we, I think, you know, with kids not being in schools and just, I don't know, being outside so much, being in fresh air, not being overly scheduled and yeah. driving around. I don't know. I just, I think our immune systems are doing better. Well, we're definitely more active yeah. in addition to everything she just said. We are, and I think that plays a role. Like, for sure. When we don't use our bodies, when we sit down all day, whether it's at a desk working or doing something else, like, I just think that encourages. But I think the illness. busyness too, just going from one thing to the next. And I think yeah. that's, for both of us, I think that was one of the really big appeals yeah. of full-time RV the, life. Yeah. And so we do get out, we explore, we do a lot, but I think that we also, we know when we need to dial down. down and just yes. Mean nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So good. And doing nothing's free. Yeah.